Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse. I am your host. Let's get into it. Hail, hail and welcome. Welcome back, everybody. To the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast brought to you by me through Spotify, through uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you're listening from, wherever you're watching from. Thank you. Thank you for joining not just me today. Thank you for joining us. Going to be bringing in uh, a friend of mine who has been on this podcast a couple of times. And um, our friendship started long distance over, you know, uh, over social media. Um, I believe he is actually, um, you know, one of the very first um, real big supporters of, of Midgard Musings, um, the channel and everything. And, and you know, we, we connected that way and, and have been friends, you know, pretty much ever since. So um, Patrick Walsh is going to be joining us. We're going to be t- going to be talking a bit today about, um, you know, how we um, can inspire our communities and and what that means about being inspirations. Um, Because Patrick's in a bit of a unique situation um, himself or in a unique position. Putting it like he's in a situation sounds like there's something something funny going on or there's something, uh, you know, blink twice if you're in danger kind of thing. (laughs) No, no, nothing like that. He is a, uh, he is in a position of being able to inspire, and it's um, not not something that uh, I think a lot of us ever, uh, you know, expect to, to find ourselves in uh, when we do find ourselves in those, um, you know, places of being able to be an inspiration to other people. So, we're going to go ahead and welcome in my good friend Patrick Walsh, and we're going to talk about it. Here we go. All right, folks. Well, as I mentioned, um, Patrick Walsh has returned to, for now. What is this, buddy? The third, third or fourth? Yeah, I think it's got to be the third, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yep. So this is this this is your uh, what I call it the trilogy, right? When you got you have the the original, and then you have the the sequel, and then what's this the one after the sequel, right? The the trilogy yep. becomes a trilogy. So yeah, we're working trilogy, on that. Like we're, we're working on a series. <laughs> yeah of Work episodes out. yeah at this point so yeah great to have you back and to be here. yeah kind of short notice too man um you know a lot of people may think i have like this really organized fashion on, on how episodes get um released and and produced the it, and it's sometimes there's there's some of that but it is the, the name of the podcast is is fitting because it's random heathen rambling ramblings and the stuff that comes up half the time is so random and it's and it and it starts from just almost nothing like i don't have like a backlog of episodes i'm trying to finish it's like well whatever happens happens <laughs> so it is it's it's so random at times and like today <laughs> i didn't uh this week i should say i didn't have an episode uh topic really planned and then you and i were were talking this about stuff privately like over messenger and I'm like, hey, you want to come on the podcast this week? No, well, I'll always take any opportunity to come on the podcast, especially, you know, you've helped me a lot with uh, my Highland group, and, you know, join a couple of my lives. So it's only proper. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought, you know, how random is that? Like, how random is it to just like, I didn't even know what to tell you we were going to be talking about when you had asked me, is there a topic? I'm like, yeah, not really. But yeah. we we ended up finding one um and uh that's it kind of segues from into or into uh what you had started saying about the high lung group um joining some of the live streams that, that you help orchestrate there and uh you know how you have become whether you realize it or not or, or whether you ever plan for it to be or not how you kind of became an influencer and somebody who can be inspiring 
to a community um, and, and, and a pretty, I think, uh, culturally diverse communities, you know, and uh, how much of a responsibility that holds and, and what, a, what a blessing that can be. It's really a truly an honor and I'm always very happy to be an inspiration or any kind of a beacon of hope or just um, a person who can relate and understand on various different things. And also it means a lot to me, especially when I tend to get down on myself and I kind of often neglect the special and incredible things that have happened or the things that I do, you know, like, um, even though I just saw High Lung last year in Chicago, it's just day-to-day life has a way of chipping away at what was once very sacred and special. It just kind of, you know, becomes not so noticeable and we get transfixed on the things that are not really going our way and just kind of get lost in the day-to-day grind, you know? Mm. So it's always nice to have a reminder, more especially when someone like point something out to me rather than me trying to seek praise or whatever. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, you know, so for, well, we're going to come around back to it and just because in case people that are listening and watching for the first time that are like, Patrick, you say he's back for the third time. Um, uh, this is my first time seeing him, you know, um, if you wouldn't mind, just kind of give a bit of background on what we're talking about. Cause we, we both just mentioned the high lung group. Um, would you mind just kind of sharing with everybody well, what that is, where it is? Um, I wouldn't mind at all. So, um, going back into the start when I met you or, uh, going back to the beginning of high and long group. Oh, I mean, or you can, involved, you can, yeah, I, I, I kind of alluded in the beginning with the people that, uh, you know, you and I've known each other since almost the very beginning of Midgard Musings. You were one of the very few like <laughs> part of the alumni you know what i mean like the the ogs the the original class of thing too you know you made such <laughs> progress in um the way you do things but yeah um long story short basically yeah you know i you're one of the first people that i took very seriously on my search as uh norse pagan and the heathen on youtube because it just seemed like the right way to go because i struggle with reading so watching something helps tremendously but anyways yeah i I remember watching one of your videos. I'm like, this guy, this this guy right here, man, he's down earth, a people person, and easy to relate to. So then, um, you know, started following your content very closely, and then long it started to. Um, I was, I believe, I was friends with Matthew Petrie first, and mm-hmm. then we became mutuals shortly thereafter. And then, um, you know, one thing led to another, and then we started becoming a uh, pretty good friends, and then came to visit you. And it was actually uh, shortly before I visited you for the first time was when I saw High Lung, my third and hopefully not last time. Um, anyone who knows me as a person, like any time they think worse to describe me, High Lung typically tends to be one of those things. And um, High Lung for me has been nothing short of a blessing and a chapter in my life that I'll never forget and has, you know, opened a door to some very lasting friendships, um, incredible experiences, and just things I never expected from following a simple musical group. Mm. And I kind of hate calling them a band because they kind of transcend that. They Mm -hmm. go to, uh, you know, being known as a tribe. But um, yeah, it was... um, after seeing them my last time in Chicago and hanging out with them, spending time with them after the, the ritual for the show, that um, I was actually discussing this with one of my friends last night is, you know, he kind of asked me, you know, why I started the group. And when I was hanging out with High Lung, uh, there are the idea that I was one of the admins of a Highland spiritual group community that I follow on Facebook. Now I've been there for a very long time, but I'm not an actual, you know, admin or moderator. So like for like about like 30 minutes, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, like, man, I can't live a lie. I I told one of the members who was vouching for me all night, like, Hey, I got to tell you, Martin, like, I'm not an admin. I'm just, a very avid supporter and you know i do my best to contribute and do what i can for the community 
And he's like, ah, oh, that's okay, that's okay. I'm like, well, I just want to let you guys know I'm not trying to fucking lie to you or anything. But, um, you know, I'm just being upfront and honest that I didn't want to ruin something like the relationship that I do have with most of the members. And mm -hmm. uh, You don't want to be misrepresented. Exactly. I want to be as honest and, you know, myself as possible because that's something that I cherish myself when dealing with people, whether they be friends, family, or just coworkers or just random pastor buyers but yeah so when i came back home from that experience i'm like you know what i really want to create a community my own now i want to build something from the ground up and give credit when credit's due uh for anyone watching um i'm not sure if you could put a link or anything but uh the facebook group that i first started following when i first started you know following high lung is the high lung spiritual community it's um one of the uh the reasons why I had the opportunities that I did and have the friendships that I do. Uh, Cliff, um, Clifford, one of my uh, really good friends, uh, we became friends through that group. And, mm -hmm. you know, he's someone also that I visited a few times. Um, I usually never travel outside my state, but, you know, when I started following Highland, I had more reason to go outside my comfort zone and then um, meeting Cliff. You know, I'll travel three hours to go see him. And then you, shortly after, you know, seeing hi, log, I drove five hours. That was probably the longest I drove it by myself. And God, the shenanigans that went with that. <laughs> <laughs> the goddamn car. I'll tell you what, man. That, that <laughs> a heart attack. I swear. I'm like, I, I haven't had that issue yet uh, it, since that's happened. But yeah, anyways, um, I wanted to, you know, make something my own and uh, create a group and a community that the center point is obviously high lung, but also more importantly, uh, mental health and spiritual awareness. And that's something that I feel like is um, somewhat misrepresented sometimes because I feel like a lot of groups and I don't know any specific ones offhand. And if I did, I want to point them out because I don't want to talk trash or anything. But I feel like a lot of it's um, material or like oriented, like they're just trying to push selling their products and whatnot or just, you know, trying to get fame and fortune or anything mm -hmm. like that. You know, I'm just about helping other people and helping myself in the process. So uh, that's when um, I started the group and uh, it's been growing ever since. We are at, I wanna say 800 members right now, which I never dreamed that to get to that number. If we get over a thousand, I'll be elated and very excited. Mm -hmm. um, there's some things that are gonna happen on my channel or my, uh, my page i'm not gonna specify too much but some very cool things might happen pretty soon and um i'm very excited for that oh i love i love uh little teasers you know what i mean i love stuff that kind of whets people's appetite and gets them interested um to support something you know so that's that's nice i can't tell you now what it is but it's gonna be something i like that i'll yeah. just say it's a very special um how do I say this without saying too much? <laughs> a very special event. All right. Important people. All right. That's a pretty good teaser. I like. To I say think so. Teaser. And you and we <laughs> and I, we all heard it here first. I mean, yeah, I, exactly. I I I didn't hear it anywhere else. Not that I you know see no, everything, but yeah. and when I say hot shots, that's kind of another huge ass clue. It's like, oh god, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> you better stop while you're ahead, then. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. But um. <laughs> That's another thing, um, an interesting point that kind of came to mind is that's something I kind of strive for in the group is active engagement. We've had some pretty cool things like Cliff had his uh, newborn child born recently and he did something uh, called uh, the waiting date. It's trying to predict um, how much or how, what the way the child's going to be and when they're going to be born. And we did a um, an amazing rattle that he crafted as a, a prize. And that was pretty cool. And then um, we have a contest right now. We wanted to do kind of like a cosplay, so to speak, of, you know, a high lung member or a high lung warrior just to kind of, you know, the engagement. I feel like mm. that's imperative, as you all well know, from yeah. your content and your page, is engagement is key. You know, the more we have people want to, you know, partake in stuff, makes it a more special and, you know, cool page to be part of and something to support. Yeah. Well, there's so much when, you know, you, you can have like a, you know, a group that's in the, you know, thousands, hundreds, tens of thousands, whatever. And, and if there's, you know, 
there's there's a lot of of things that can be going on at any one given point in time in a group that size um or it can be that it's just a dead group with a bunch of faces on it you know so you gotta like control just to kill time kind of like you know me yeah. you know yeah like, true like the right memes or like uh other various things too yeah and i like how the group that you you, you know the, the highland group which by the way you read you talked earlier about links right like everything will be linked oh awesome down in the description and in the show notes of this podcast you know for all you listeners that want to check it out they will be linked there um uh point a fact that i want to make on that is you know patrick here um who started this has him and some other moderators and and co-admins i guess of the group right that yep. that 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 do a really great job with um moderating it you know what i mean just keeping keeping things interesting keeping things uh engaging and, and keeping things friendly and, and making sure that it's a safe space and part of that process involves you know when you want to check out the group you know there's going to be a list of questions and, and and checkpoints that you have to pass thank you so much for mentioning that because it's very infuriating not to cut you off or anything it says it's amazing how many people could overlook something so simple like literally mm-hmm. The questions I asked, I don't remember them off the top of my head, but basically it's like, do you agree to the rules? Yes. And then very simple questions like, you know, what's your favorite high and long song slash ritual? Um, something very basic, not anything too technical. Right. Even if you just answer, yes, I agree to the rules. I'm like, all right, you're good to go. But if you don't bother to answer the questions, I'm like, I don't bother to approve your submission. Now, there's only very rare exceptions to that rule is if anyone who joins my group that came from the high lung spiritual community group, the original group that I was part of, then I'm like, okay, well, they know what they're doing. They're kind of like, I'm basing a lot of my experience from that group mm-hmm. into this group, you know, because yeah. learning a lot of pinnacle lessons also. Uh, there's been some people who, you know, rustled some feathers and that's kind of the tedious and challenge part of uh having a group based on mental health because we like it's what they to deny a post on like your average you know page but when it's mental health people have a tendency to be you know maybe a little over dramatic sometimes and i'm not trying mm-hmm. to say that in a bad way either it's just you know you have rejection sensitivity you have depression you know all these other mental aspects that can make it tricky to navigate sometimes Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's like I, I always tell my admins and moderators, like as long as it's high love related and also mental health related, you really can't go wrong. But you'd be surprised. You know, uh, we had an incident occur today uh, where somebody shared an activity that they're partaking of that I'll just say is not recreational in every state yet. Uh huh. Yeah. So, hey recreational here in missouri kick-ass rock and roll am i gonna spark up a doobie right here no yeah because you, it, it, it could it's cause not appropriate it. and yeah exactly. exactly there could be like a 16 year old watching this or uh someone who's way too impressionable or too sensitive i mean the list could go on on and on and on as to why that's a bad idea but that's just one example mm-hmm. yeah so they you know and I think that's just with any any anything that you have a responsibility to uh, and 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 uh, a hand in trying to control or maintain it a, a certain image a certain environment you know I mean you're going to have to occasionally take the trash out and weed the garden you know it's just part of the process. But the necessary process too. It's actually uh, enriching to knowing that you know uh, one of our uh, one of my admins uh, her name is Rose incredible person and kind of like uh, the mama bear of the group yeah she's more vigilant than i am sometimes because you know again i started this group as i want to say a hobby but it is a hobby if i if you could think of a better word please let me know but it's just it's something i do on my free time which you know i have a lot of but sometimes i spend it um other ways like going on hikes or mm-hmm. you know doing whatever and sometimes i don't invest a lot of time into the group mainly because you know it was like i tell some people i don't listen to highlight every day and they're like what really i'm like you don't understand if i listen to highlight every darn day 
eventually I'm just gonna be like, I'm sick of hearing them. Yeah. I don't want that to happen. So I listened to it sparingly. You know, I remember a very long period of time where like almost like two years were legit every day. I have listened to it. I've just created all this awesome energy and just experiences. But now it's like, you know, okay, okay, that's cool. But let's, let's do it in moderation. And that's also another important lesson, not just with music, but anything you partake of doing in moderation, whether it be drinking, smoking, um, hell, even working. Do that in moderation. Yeah. Don't don't work yourself to death, you know, because then you're gonna be like, I can't stand my life, and you're just gonna be in a negative headspace, and you don't want to be that. You don't want to do that. Yep, that's a that's a really good uh, you know point to make. I think that you know, uh, there's so much going on um, in the world at any given point in time. It's like we're being overstimulated more often than we're not, and because you know, if it's not you know, the radio in your car or the TV in your house, it's, you know, the apps on your phone that we're scrolling through. And then, you know, we're, we're out doing various things or, or whatever. There's just, there's so much going on at any given point in time that you do, you, you feel like just feeling like, it, you know, if I stay busy, it'll, it'll drown out the, the noise. And then you end up, like you say, becoming so burnt out on the thing that you thought would clear your head or, or keep you away from the distractions becomes the distraction itself. It, 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 your quality of life goes down, you know, there's exactly consequences, you know, but again, physically, mentally, spiritually life, just all of the, all of those aspects are, are impacted by it, you know? So it's a good point, you know, everything in moderation, it's, there's nothing that you really can't or shouldn't enjoy as long as you're not hurting other people. And, right. and as, as, as long as they're being enjoyed in, in moderation exactly and that's something that uh i think i i mentioned it before too is like um uh, one uh one of which being like my alcohol consumption i mm -hmm. drink every day now when i say every day i'm not talking like wake up <laughs> you know yeah. that's that's too much i know people that's like you, you, you weren't ways. scooping up your cheerios out of bud light or something exactly you know? that's, that's a little much a little much <laughs> But, you know, I typically drink in the evening, you know, um, there are rare occasions where I'll drink like in the afternoon or evening and that's like holidays or my birthday was just a couple of days ago. So I'm like, all right, let's go crazy, you know, but just, yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, you know, so now I drink typically, um, two or three nights a week. Like I said, every week's different. There might be a bad week where I'm just like, life is really tricky right now and I need to numb the pain. I'm not saying that's an excuse. I'm not condoning it or my behavior i'm just explaining you know yeah 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 exactly. yeah hey we're all there man i mean dude it's <laughs> I, I i said at one point in my life i'm surprised and again this is not a this isn't a brag right it, this isn't like something you should be like huh ah. but I, at one point i was like i am surprised that i am not drinking more than i am given things that were going on in my life you know right. like i'm surprised that i'm only drinking as much and at that time dude i was drinking a lot i was going through probably two liters of scotch a week and you know uh that's too much <laughs> it really starts to take a no soul. yeah two two yeah two uh two two liters like so so two half gallons yeah a gallon a gallon of scotch a week, you know uh you need you need you need to dial it back a little bit more than just a little bit matter of fact i had to go i had to basically like go abstinent of of all things like any kind of stimulants no alcohol no 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 nicotine so no vaping right for like 21 days straight just to wow. kind of like do detox. a hard reset yeah basically like detox you know not that i was i wasn't feeling dependent on it i was just at a point where i'm like i'm in control of this and i can stop this and i need to get back in control before i start going out of control because that you know when and and I, and that's kind of why I wanted to you know have the topic of discussion be inspiring our communities. You know, it's it's I think it's a little bit different for folks like us when we are not we're we're more than just who we are on our day to day lives. You know what I mean? Like we have an online presence. We have a a, a responsibility to some degree, varying degrees. Different people would say you know different levels of responsibility, but there is a responsibility 
whenever you're doing something like what you and I are doing, you know, you with a with a, a group that is focused on mental health and wellness and spiritual well being, and you know, I have a podcast and a channel that is, you know, putting myself in in front of of an audience as well. You know, you start going out of, out of spiraling out of control and, and being irresponsible and doing things to excess. Um, people see that. And, and how inspiring are we at that point? Or, or are we being ins- inspirational in, in negative it's ways? Really you know, are counterintuitive we... And then we're just, we're, we're, once you get down that rabbit hole, it's really very difficult to climb yourself out of. And also speaking, not to cut you off again, I have a terrible tendency to do that, but um, no, you're fine. I, used to, I used to be addicted to uh, opiates. For the sake of trigger warnings, I'll, I won't get specific, but I'll just say that, you know, I came very close, not just one time, but a, a, a couple times where I could have died. One time in particular was my, um, when I overdosed uh, back in October 27th, I think it was 26th, 27th of uh, 2017. So like, I'll, I'll try to make this short, but it's also a very uh, important story for myself. Mm-hmm. But also, I feel like anyone who might be watching might be suffering from substance of, you know, abuse. You should know that any minute could be your last minute. But um, there was one day that um, I woke up and I was texting my guy. I'm like, hey, man, I want something. He's like, OK, cool. And that day, I remember it was very, very beautiful outside, like just crazy. I'm like, wow, cool. And we're always watching Sopranos that morning and there's one episode that was playing. And I'm just like, anytime I watch this episode, it like takes me back to this experience. But like, so I woke up and I waited to get my check at work. I'm like, all right, I'm going to get my check. I'm going to do my thing. Went up, got my check. No issues. I went to Walmart up the street. All right, here's my check. Cash it. Sorry, we can't cash it. System's offline. I'm like, oh, that sucks. Whatever. Went down the other way to the other Walmart. Oh, sorry, your systems are down. You know, mm-hmm. can't catch your check. I'm like, huh, that's two times now. It's kind of like a red flag or like an early yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And so then something's trying to tell you something. <laughs> exactly. And I was helping on ignoring it and I paid the price. But so I uh I went to this one place, I got a, a loan one time, and I'm like, hey, can you cash this? Or I guess sure, do you'll you know do it and then I went down to my guy and then he's like, hey, careful, this stuff's really potent. I'm like, I thought he was just trying to hype it up and just trying to boost sales and all that crap. No, he wasn't lying. I, like, I'm not trying to get too graphic here. So I did the, the substance. And then I was going to my friend's house shortly thereafter. Um, I would mention specific streets, but it do no justice because none of you guys live in my neck of the woods. If you do, Hey, but it's what it is. But um, I ended up going the opposite direction, and then this is the part that baffles me, that blows my mind. Is I somehow managed to drive my vehicle for over fifteen minutes without being aware of it. I blacked out, and somehow managed to drive towards my house without running into anybody, without going off the road just yet. Wow. Or anything else. Or running to any other vehicles on the road. And I ended up hitting a guardrail. Car flipped over three times. The gas tank started leaking. And I one day I'm going to share a picture. I'm, if I haven't already shared a picture with you, but the truck is like pretty much smushed like a sandwich. There was like two or three times I remember coming to consciousness and then passing out again. But I wasn't mm. installed in the ambulance uh, head to the hospital. I'm like, what happened? You're a, you overdose. And I'm like, am I at such and such place? Like, oh, no, no, you're over here. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, how's the truck? They're like, oh, no. I'm like, oh, that bad. Cool. Run on. <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell you what, though, that was a, a tough road and a very difficult time indeed, you know, coming off the substance and then the damage it did with the, not just financially, but, um, spiritually and mm. um with my family and my friends too because they couldn't trust me why should they because the specific substance that i was addicted to all i was focused on when i woke up was like how am i gonna get money okay i got the money how am i gonna get a ride oh mm-hmm. all right 
how are we going to get the stuff? It's just, that's, that's the, the three things you deal with every day. And then if you're not dealing with that, you're like, oh crap, I got withdrawals or, oh no, all oh, this is all crap. It's like, yeah. anyone who's watching, if you're having substance issue problems, it's okay to seek help. Actually, it's imperative that you seek help. You're not alone. You, there are so many people who have the same struggle battle every day. It's not a defeat when you're seeking help. It's defeat when you're six feet under. It's a defeat when you're in jail. It's defeat when you're in rehab unwillingly. So when you have that opportunity, seize it before it's too, too late. Because that's something you, you don't want to mess around with. Sorry, I kind of, kind of yeah. went off the, off the trail. No. <laughs> no, no, that's that. I mean, and that's kind of what I, you know, was that that's what it's about here, man. I mean, I think the people know that listen, you know, that's what this is about. It's, you know, there's a topic, but it's more of a guideline. You know, it's not a hard thing that we're going to stick to. We're going to talk around it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to, of course, go off trail. We're going to climb some trees. We're going to go in some caves. We're going to come out the other side and um, then we're going to go back through and maybe find some other holes to to dig around in. But, you know, that's, you know, had had you had you not gone through those things, and I and I was looking through some stuff earlier today, and um, just like reminiscing, and uh, came across a post about how, and, and we actually did an episode on this, you and I did about how building worth through adversity. Yep. And how when when it comes now to like this topic about inspiring our communities and actually being someone who no matter how big or small is, um, I mean, looked at in, in an admirable way or looked up to, or, 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 you know, seen as someone of, of importance and, uh, and, and how had we not endured the challenges and had not gone through the adversities and ordeals that we've gone through, we wouldn't be that person who is so, inspirational or 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 whatever today and it, it it's really like people can tell i'm talking around like talking through it but it's like choppy because it's hard for me even to just say like yeah i'm an inspirate because it's, it's it sounds so conceited coming from me but i want to talk about the reality of it is that you know people do give you credit patrick like they i mean people say great things about you and i mean i do too it's it's a you know it's it's been wonderful to to develop a friendship and a bond with you over the years that started from a long distance social media interaction, you know, you followed my work and supported me. And now we're supporting each other and I'm on your lives and you're over here on the podcast. And it's, you know, the, the, the cycle continues, or the, you know, it, it goes on and when we can talk about those things and we can say, yeah, man, you're, you're inspiring to me. Well, guess what? I'm inspiring to you too. You know, like there's this back and forth. So, yeah. You know, I mean, and, and there's other people I know that are inspired by you. Um, and may not say it directly or may not have the opportunity or, or whatever to say it, but I know they feel it because look at the community you've built, you know, you, you started off with an idea and, uh, a dream and, and, and something that, that inspired you. And now you've got 800 some people that find a safe space in what you've created, you know, you, you've given them a place where they can sort of let their hair down and be themselves a bit and then know that there's not going to be any sort of uh repercussion or or, or negative la you know lash back or whatever about it you know and that's that's gotta that's gotta be a, a great feeling and then uh you know had you not gone through the things you've gone through to appreciate what you have and be inspired to want to do it would that even would would your group even be here would with the highland group that you're talking you know that you which is high lung was it mental health and spiritual community or is that what it's called or what is it the name yeah of the group? so high lung spiritual mental uh specifically it's terrible to say but adhd and yeah. all the lovely things have a lovely way of uh making you forget the simplest things but yes it's the high lung spiritual and um mental health group yeah and like you said it's going to be posted down below but uh i'm really glad you uh touch that too is again going to a discussion i have one of my members last night this is hearing him say all these wonderful things like the group has helped him so much and just like even as a spectator when i'm looking through some of our posts and i see 
people interacting with each other and saying wonderful things about my group. It's just like, it's surreal because I know it's my group, but like the group has taken a life of its own. It's kind of funny too, in some ways is um, my admins and moderators create this group chat. Not me. They created it. I'm like, all right, yeah, cool. Yeah. I'm like majority of the time, just like sitting off to the side, like, oh, wow. Interesting. These guys got this going. I'm like, that's cool. It's, it's really, yeah. uh, really fascinating. And, um, you know, it really makes me happy to see that going on from something that I created. And I'm a very, uh, not very egocentrical kind of person. I am very, you know, modest in a lot of ways. Like anytime I do something that's really cool, I don't boast about it very often. Like, uh, for example, my drawings, like SpongeBob and all those. Mm, like, yeah. There are times where, like, after I got done doing something or drawing, I'm, like, looking at this, I'm, like, all right, all right, that's what I'm talking about right there, you know? But, um, yeah, like I said, just, you know, that's one of the feelings that I, I like to chase after is to, you know, and I'll tell this to you watching, anyone who's watching, you know, there's few feelings in the world that can really measure up to this, but knowing that you make an impact and help someone. And it could be a variety of different ways. It could be very, very simple things. That, And it's important to remember that you may not see how it may possibly affect somebody. For example, like, you know, there are some days where I'm having a bad day and someone gives me a very warm smile. Even if it only lasts for a couple hours, I was in a good mood. I'm like, hey, that's something. Or just, you know someone opened up the door for you or big things like a member of one of my groups comes out takes time out of their day to say hey i really appreciate what you're doing or um sorry i was thinking <laughs> of something really emotional is uh when my cat ivar was uh not doing too good and i made a post about it on facebook and uh maria friends actually commented on that post saying you know sending healing energy to ivar i'm just like yeah wow i just when people take time out of their days to do something like that especially high lung no less it just further really reinforces why i have the love and passion that i do for this tribe and why i created what i did but also you know that's an example Mm -hmm. of something you could do you know, i'm not saying be a member of high lung but i'm just saying you know saying nice things you know and caring what's important as i preach this very often is intentions 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 you know like for example going back to intentions is when you think about like if you don't have an altar that you could set up in the privacy of your own residence hey you know what even if the altar is in your mind that's good enough in my opinion the gods will see that, you know, uh, you don't have a lot of money to spend on things. Hey, you know what? Maybe you could craft something like, you know, Papa does or a clip does or uh, Matthew, you yeah. know, anything. It's just, you've got to bear your true intentions of, Hey, you know what? I really want to venerate my ancestors, my family and my gods. I really want to do something. Once you have that in your heart, I feel like you're already on the right path. You can't go wrong. Yeah. I mean, great. It can get a little tricky when you start to overcomplicate things like I do. Like, I'm like, oh, crap. I'm going to do, like, last night, I wanted to celebrate, you know, um, festivities. And I'm like, oh, crap. How am I going to do this perfectly? How am I going to do this perfectly? Mm -hmm. Hey, that's okay. <laughs> just let it play out. And more often than not, it's just a wee bit of, you know, pretty to this. As more often than not, is the spiritual and amazing experiences that we encounter happen at the most random times. Dude. It's not something you plan on. It's just like Ain't that the truth. Didn't yeah. plan on it. It just yeah. happens. It's the it's the randomness of it. And I, you know, sure, there are there are definitely times I think that you know, planning something out for a specific event, especially if it's a major holy tide or whatever, you know, like plan it out, do something of a, of a bit of a spectacular nature as to, to whatever degree you can, you know, like, of course. but, but if like, you know, uh, so, you know, today is, uh, the second at the time, like we're, we're filming this on the second when this airs, it's going to be the fourth. Um, and 
so the day before today, like it was, you know, first of May and, and, and everyone is, uh, you know, we see all these posts about Beltane and, 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 and stuff. And my wife is more eclectic than, than I am in terms of my, the, the holy tides that I observe, but Hey, you know, if it's a holy tide to her and we want to celebrate, then I'm all about celebrations. You know I mean? That's the thing about us pagans is if, if it, if it calls for celebration when we're there, <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. We don't <laughs> but, um, away from that. Yeah. So she wanted to do something and it was very, um, it was, it was not a long plan. Cause again, you know, we, we didn't like, well, in a week from now, let's do this thing, that, and the other for Beltane. It was just, well, she said, oh, I'm going to make this for dinner. Or I'm going to have this for dessert. And I'm going to get some wine and then we'll have a fire. And then the, the gift at the fire, I'm going to actually post a picture. Um, have you seen it yet? Did I send, did I, I showed it to you, right? You might have. I don't remember if I, I did, have, but if you haven't, I'll have it, but I'll have to check it out. If you haven't, um i will show you um but for everyone listening and watching it's going to be pump it's going to be right up here on this uh on this on the screen i'm going to put a an image right here so you can see uh what she did but it was like the most beautiful arrangement of the simplest things that we just had laying around not laying around in the sense of like junk but um it was like we have a peace lily plant in the house you know so it was one of the it was one of the the flowers the petals from the peace lily she also has an orchid um, plant and there was, you know, some petals from the orchid and then grains and seeds and fruits and incense and obsidian, like just various things that, that were all like arranged in such a way that just looks so pretty, you know? And I'm like, I call for a vote that for all future clearly folk tribal functions that involve ritual that, that, that she be henceforth and forever the the ritual arrangement uh, yeah. uh arranger whoever like, i don't know we'll have to come up with a name or, or whatever <laughs> you know like the yeah. people that put like flower arrangements and stuff in, in florists like she's that for the tribe like that's her in uh, like and everyone's like yep we're we, we second that i'm like yeah you can't argue it. look at this like look at how beautiful it is and and say yeah you know but again the the, the point being like you say the intention was to do something genuine the purpose was for uh you know what the beltane time of the year you know what what beltane means for her so there was already purpose our intentions that went into it were of or you know we we didn't take a very long time to plan for this but we're going to give something of, of meaning no matter how small it may be and you know so maybe not not everybody has a, a plant laying around or 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 not say laying around like careless but you know what i mean it's you know not exactly. everybody has a house plant but the point of it is, is, you know, it can be something just that simple. You know, we have some herbs, some grains, you know, um, what, what, what your intentions, intention and purpose. It's like, well, you can't, they, they got to go hand in hand. You got to know why you're is, why it is that you're doing it. And then the intentions behind that, that carry it. Otherwise it'd be unnecessarily chaotic and, you know, you just won't really yeah reap what you're really trying to sow so to speak right and, you know <laughs> like, like I, knew, I knew a guy one time you know talking about intentions i knew a guy one time and he's like well you know i just had this red bull in the fridge and that was my gift to the gods i'm like ah. dude you can do it better than a red bull come on yeah, like take I take mean, this seriously take this somewhat seriously than a freaking red bull like <laughs> the, I you know like the gods don't like, need to be given wings they already got you know yeah, I mean, they already, yeah. they're already sacred beings anyway like come on get get with the program here take this somewhat seriously you know right. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of um uh, an offering that i uh managed to get uh yesterday was uh so i saw um cliff has this really cool flag about the norse holidays and um one of them uh yesterday's holiday i will butcher if i try to pronounce it but um basically one of the things that was made as offerings was bread butter honey I'm like well, that's simple enough but then i'm like well i have some extra money to spend so let's do something so i went to the local local grocery store and i found this uh i didn't want to get your average sliced bread because that just seemed like an insult personally i'm like nah no so I went to the bakery section of the store, Schnooks, anyone who's familiar with them. And then um Schnooks. Yep, Schnooks. And then I got this uh take and bake, I think is what it was called. 
It's like it looked like it was already baked, but I guess it wasn't. So you just take it home, need it baker for like seven or ten minutes, and then um yeah. unbeknownst to me though, I didn't realize how hard it was to slice. I mean it's funny too. I don't want to get sliced bread, but I wanted to slice it afterwards, if that makes yeah. sense. I it seemed like it'd be more meaningful. But like then I got some Irish butter and then some um some honey, some local honey. And what I did is I tried to slice up this bread, but I tell you what, it was a pain in the butt. I'm like squishing the bread as I'm trying to slice it. I'm like, damn it. Ah. Do you have a good knife or what? Are you over there like trying to cut it with a spoon or what? what's the deal? No, no, not that. Do I need to get you a knife, Patrick? Do I need to, do I need to come over there and sharpen your axe for you? I think you might just have to, Jesse. I mean, it's a loaf of bread, buddy. Let's get, let's if it's get an excuse get to get you here, I'll take it, you know? <laughs> but no, yeah. yeah. The bread, I literally, I cut it like five minutes after I baked it. I don't know if that had something to do with it or if it's just the texture. It's sourdough. I'm mm. not sure uh, if that had something to do with it. But, um, you know what? Sourdough, I, yeah. Sourdough can be kind of um, springy. Yeah, yeah exactly. spr springy, you know? Yeah, like you're sitting there, I'm like, this is becoming a biscotti stick now. Like <laughs> you got it's almost like you gotta whip out the Husqvarna, man. You gotta you gotta go back there and 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 rev up the the old steel chainsaw, you know? <laughs> I would do two different knives too. I'm like, oh maybe this one's just not meant for this. And then I'm like, uh, oh, just the same. So anyways, I I sliced it up and then I just shredded it apart and I just poured some honey glaze over it and then poured some butter and melted it. And just, you know, I sat underneath the tree and I'm like, all right, this will do. And then having the fire that I did, I feel like that was probably the best offering besides the bread. But then um, also more importantly, having the opportunity to wear the headdress and use the drum that I got. Those are two things. Mm. I'll tell you what, I was so, the drum from Papa Olaf that I knew was going to come and arrive. That much I was sure of. But now I tell you what, when I saw you, and we hung out and I heard your drum. It just anything that Papa makes, it's just I, I could sing his praises all day and it wouldn't be enough. It's just he's a true master of his craft and a true inspiration as well as you are. You know, it's just you two. I see you guys do what you do, you know, going back to helping the community. And that's one thing, a little shout out that I'm gonna give out to these two gentlemen, is Pop Olson and then Jesse here. It's just these two men on my days where I don't feel that spiritually present. Or motivated i just i watched you two man i'm just like man this is what i inspire and what i want to embody in my practices and i'm not going to do it specifically as they do because that would just be copying but i'm going to apply it in my own ways that i can to my life and that's something that they inspire me to do and that's kind of ties into what we're discussing in this this podcast is when you think when you can become someone like that that's really a remarkable feat but it's also very imperative, as we mentioned earlier in the podcast, is not to get too egotistical about it. It's okay to give yourself a pat on the back, like kick ass rock and roll. I'm really making a name for myself, but don't, not well, assuming anyone's going to do this. But, you know, speaking broadly, though, there are times we abuse that privilege or we abuse that, you know, influence to attain things that may not entirely be wholesome. Mm -hmm. And this is all very hypothetical and theoretical, but I'm just saying. Um, no, no. It's... Like... Sorry, go ahead. No, I mean, what I was, you know, I'm, I'm agreeing with everything that you're saying in the sense that, um, and, and that was one of the things I wanted to, because I keyed in on what you were saying earlier. Um, and I wanted to come back to, and, and it's a good point right now is, is the ego, you know, because you had said something earlier. You were like, I'm not, I'm not too much of an, I'm not too much into, you know, my ego or egotistics. And I'm like, you got to be a little, yeah, you have to be so you have to be aware that first of all, um, the ego is not all bad. You know what I mean? Like there, 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 there's aspects and parts that, um, you know, need to be kept in check and, and through the right, through, through the, through the right methods and, and through the right practice and, and, um, yeah, methods, you know, there's, there's times when, you know, ego death, is necessary but it's not it's not like extinguishing it's 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 putting something to rest and allowing the multifaceted uh aspects of us of of ourselves as 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 a creature as a species you know as as humanity to embrace our ego and 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 
keep in keep it in check at the same time you know so you, we have to be as 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 people that i mean dude if you were to tell me and say that you're not egotistical it's not a bad thing if you are just a little bit because you have to have a bit of an ego to want to sit in front of a camera and talk to people like this or do live streams or engage with people you know what i mean like there it, it you have to have that it to, otherwise you'd be like nope never going to do that somebody else can do it you know there's, exactly. there's there, and there's plenty of people like that and i know like there's been people who uh have, have like called into the podcast or written into the podcast and it was like you know i've been sitting on this for a long time and haven't really wanted to do it because of you know their their personal reasons in which they're entitled to feel and then that's okay there's nothing wrong with it but what i mean is is you know there are gen there are genuinely people just not built for this not that it's a hard thing to do but it's not a part of their character it's not a part of their ego they're, you know that 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 part of the ego doesn't exist for them um yeah but to that point, you know, what you were saying is, you know, it, it is something that can run away with itself. And there are people that have let it do so. You know, there, there's 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 people out here that have abused this. You know, they're 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 five minutes of fame or, or whatever, you know what I mean? And and they they become charlatans and, and just uh, Our negative style is not genuine, but. Very yeah. yell, driven by ulterior motives, whether it be profit or right. Perfection. They're not about the inspiration, and and then that was the, that was the second part of what I was wanting to to address right now was that, you know, look at look at kind of the pattern, look at look at the flow of things. You know, you know, um, I started doing this stuff like YouTube videos, and then you know, podcasts later on. I started doing this because I was looking for something in my area. I didn't really find anything that was quite like what I was doing. And I start searching online about, you know, heathen kindreds or starting heathen kindreds. And I found a video on YouTube by Eric Shervin, Eric Ward Weaver Shervin on the Ravens call. And uh, it was talking about heathen meetups. And I'm like, who's this guy, you know? And then Eric is this, is, is the source of my inspiration for starting Midgard Musings. Um, his channels was a little bit started before mine. Um, and, uh, you know, he was my, my source of inspiration. Um, I didn't do the same thing that he was doing. I originally started the channel to be, well, it was musings of the, of the hover mall. I was, I was reciting stanzas from the hover mall and, and kind of just dissecting them a bit and talking about stuff. And then, you know, all, days go into months, go into years down the road. And then, you know, here you are inspired by by myself and then you mentioned papa olofsson fjallvatir workshop being an inspiration and 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 now you've done things and are, are doing things that who knows who's going to be inspired by you and who's going to do something that patrick walsh did and that tells the, it, it, the the ins what I, yeah so exactly what i'm trying to say is like the ins tr the genuine desire to inspire desire to inspire uh is is it, it 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 transfers through to the genuine people that want to continue that flame you know and keep that flame lit it's like without even knowing it you know eric inspired i'm sure he's inspired other people i mean i, I can't be the only one but here i am because of eric and now here you are because of me or or papa or, or both you know, and then what's to come for those that said they're there because of Patrick Walsh, you know, and, and so on and so forth. So there's this there's this continuity. It keeps going. And if it's ingenuine or disingenuine, I should say, you know, what I mean, like if it's if it's not yeah, ingenuine. Right. So if it's not from the heart, if it's not pure. It'll. It'll turn to crap. I feel like and that also, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that, too, because I feel like if you're not being genuine. <laughs> It'll find its way of discarding itself mm -hmm. and you'll lose what you're trying to gain. And I think that's beautiful because like, you know, uh, there's one topic I kind of want to press on before I forget with ADHD, but um, me being someone who suffers from, I mean, that might sound bleak, but it is what it is though. It is suffering is from my physical deformity, being born the way I am. I, and then having, doing what I'm doing, you know, via YouTube, Facebook, what have you, is, you know, again, I've told you before, too, uh, 
privately and through a stream is I personally, a lot of times I can't stand hearing my voice via like, you know, right now talking, I have no qualms, no issues, no problems at all. But like afterwards, when I watch this, I'm like, ah, I can't take this. <laughs> but um, it provides me an opportunity to boost my ego. Again, previously we were discussing is like, that's something that I struggle with very greatly is loving myself wholly. Because right now it's partly, and I just want to, my goals to be you know fully accepting and um appreciate my flaws and my you know my perks and my uh my benefits and such but um yeah with being so important in my situation i almost feel i don't want to say obligated but obligated you know just to inspire anyone else who might be suffering from a physical affliction or even a mental affliction because i remember you made a uh, a podcast I forgot what's what specific one it was, but it was um before or after um the the Vatier, the Lampeteer um uh-huh. I guess. But you're talking about, you know, mental afflictions and how you really couldn't relate to a lot of that. And and like when I was watching that podcast, I'm like, well, I can relate a lot to that. And I think it's really important to do what I'm doing to let other people know whether it be mental or physical, that you're not alone and you have the strength and courage to overcome those yeah. issues. It's funny because I, I, there's a lot of times when I'm like watching or scrolling something and I hear someone say that, I'm like, oh, that's cheesy as shit. But then, um, again, pardon the French, but um, it's just, it's amazing how much of an impact those words can have and how that reassurance, because I think, the ultimate goal is to find that one person like me or you or anyone who's yeah. going through a messed up time and they see that and it just hits them at the right moment. Yeah. Even if it's just one person or yeah. 10 or a thousand people, you know, it's just the you're fact right. that you're finding that opportunity is something that cannot be like I'm trying to find the words again. Darn it. Yeah, it I mean, you, Go ahead. you can't, you can't, you can't, it is, it's a hard thing to, to, to verbalize. It's a hard thing to, uh, to explain, but, you know, with, with you, man, like to, to your point, you know, cause I, I, I strive to be transparent without oversharing, but to let people know like, Hey, you know, there, while I understand and, and, and fully realize the importance of, of, uh, you know, mental health awareness and all these things, I, I, I literally don't live with these conditions you know what i mean i i live with someone who has those not maybe all the same but but has you know suffers from mental health conditions and so i i can only uh empathize you know i can't sympathize because i don't go through it so when you've got someone like yourself who is open and honest and transparent to the point of of not feeling shame because of it you know to talk open like yeah you know what i'm i'm and and don't take this the wrong way, but I'm a hot mess, and it's okay if you are too, right? It's it, it it's that kind of self awareness and acceptance, and and putting yourself out here in the public eye, that and you know on 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 the same scale. But I was watching this uh this documentary about um the Judds, so country music. Women, the the mother and daughter, Naomi and White Winona Judd, who paved the way for female country music performers. They 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 are legends in the in the country music scene. Um, but when when Naomi, the mother, uh, passed away because of suicide, another trigger warning. Sorry. Um, there, you know, Winona took took that carried the torch and and she did all these things and 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 she wanted to do it and the reason why i'm bringing this up is i should she talked about you know if if the world sees and if people see and, and you know again realizing the kind of influence that these ladies have had and the the following they've had since the 80s you know they're 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 world famous if if why no winona winona uh, winona judd winona judd i keep saying winona <laughs> winona judd if uh if she could do it Right. If she could go out and perform these shows 
and honor her mother's legacy and talk about these things, having just lost her mother to suicide, right? And it, her thing was if, that if if I can show the world that if I can do it, anyone can do it. Exactly. You know, and this is the type of stuff that we're talking about, inspiring our communities. If we can do things and even, you know, everybody struggles. Everybody has their bad days. Everybody has some days, you know, some people's bad days are worse than other people's uh, bad days. But we're all having bad days. We're all going through some stuff, man. You know, um, I, I, I received. I received a message from someone either earlier today or yesterday saying, and I don't really know this person. I just recently connected to them through that again, a, a mutual friend on, on social media. Right. And, um, you know, they were talking about, you know, the last week's podcast and, and, you know, that, that you meaning me, um, came back from, from your, you know, traveling for, the death of my father and, and came back and put out quality content. And that, then those were their words, not mine. They, they said, you know, you came back from such a thing and, and put out quality content. You know, you realize how much that like just tugs at my heart because quite honestly, there, there, there's a lot of times that I feel like the quality that I put out isn't up to speed and it's not up to part of like, I could do so much better if I really, if I had more time, if I had more equipment, if, 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 you know, I well, find all I find all these reasons too. why I think it could be better, and then I hear like the you know the, the comment like that or the message like that, and I'm like, man, I I made an impact. You know, I impacted somebody, and they they took time out of their day to tell me as such, you know, and it just no matter what, no matter where this podcast goes, no matter where your your high loan group goes, you know, I, I feel like I, I can speak for the both of us in that, you know, any time we get those types of comments or messages, it, 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 it really inspires us to keep doing these things, you know, it from just that one plan. person. It fails yeah. plan, you know, to really put that more into practice and to also, as, as you're mentioning too, you know, oh, I could have done this better. I couldn't, it's okay. And it's healthy to have those aspirations to do better. Right, but when it comes in the form of negative cr criticism, like "Oh, Jesus Christ, what are you, what are you doing? What yeah. are you doing? This ain't content. This is garbage." And it's just then you're like, "Okay, hold up, hold up. You know what? This podcast didn't meet my expectations, but you know what? Next time, it's gonna be, it's gonna be darn too, yeah, really cool. I'm trying my best not to curse right now. It's like second nature. <laughs> Where like, ah! at this point it's all right i mean we're it's pg-13 we already we we got past the the r rating <laughs> what happened with drinking game i'll tell you what <laughs> but, um, but yeah um trying to go back on track when i was thinking though is um again um, i imagine i'm very sure that uh i'm certain that this podcast will be shared with my group and I imagine a few of them will be watching in the case of that situation. I just want to tell my viewers and, you know, my, my group that I appreciate and love you guys very much for doing what you do, whether it's as simple as waking up and like, Hey, you know what? I want to like or share or comment on this post. Um, or I want to take time to let someone know they're going to be okay. Like, um, one of my members, um, really hit hard what happened to her is uh she lost one of her pets a cat no less and that just she, she, you know, she had to put on the rest and i'm like you know what i was in your shoes literally last year or last summer and just it's not an easy thing to do but just knowing that i made this group and i made a safe space for her to express and to really feel okay with not being okay and being in a messed up situation like that, whether it be natural or unnatural, you know, you're here, you're okay. You're going to be all right. You know, and such an example of losing your pet, you know, just know that it's not going to last forever or if you're um, recovering from a substance, you know, addiction or um, battling, you know, your uh, depression or whatever it is you're afflicted with, it's not going to last forever. There's going to be good days, but also it's important to ground yourself and remember like, ah, oh, yeah, mm. there's going to be some bad days. There's going to be some days you're like to hell with this crap. I'm done. Yeah. But tomorrow. Tomorrow's also, another day. 
open the door. You don't know what you're going to walk through, but it could yep. be great. You know, could be. You want to be here to see it either way. Exactly. Yeah. I had a, something interesting happen the other night, too. Uh, you talked about earlier the, uh, you know, festivities, celebrations, Beltane. We talked about with um, what my wife did. And a lot of people have similar existences or, or similar family situations where there's multiple things going on. So you're you're going to do your Norse stuff, then you're going to do your more, I don't know, whatever, Celtic stuff, your eclectic, whatever. You're like It's multi faceted and there's a lot of things going on in a lot of people's houses so it's relative relatable right and uh again the, the the randomness of it all you know like i had no plans of putting myself into a ritual state to to do something you know so like my wife's like you know you know you need to give something you need to do something for this for this gift and then you need to recite the the blessing or the prayer or the chant or whatever it is. And I'm like, but I didn't have time to prepare for this. You know, I'm like, I didn't write anything down. What the hell am I doing here? I don't know what this <laughs> is about. Like, you know, again, it was like one of those things I get put on the spot, but I said, no, okay. Um, you know, she declared it. And so I was like, all right, well, uh, she started showing me what it was. And then I got the, 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 the items that I contributed to the, to the gift. And, um, in that moment, you know, just, just standing there by the fire and, and, and having a moment to sort of uh, put my put my mind in a place of, of consideration for what the Beltane holiday means, you know, and, and what it is represented for for, for a lot of uh, pagans. And, and, you know, the, the thing that came to my mind to say was may the gifts that we are about to give be the uh, i forget the exact words but it was made that may the gifts that we are giving or are about to give um be the start of new growth in desolate soil or, or or something along those lines. Again, it was yeah, that makes sense. It was it was it was like a one time, like a one liner sort of deal. Like it wasn't a long paragraph. It wasn't a long ritual. But I that was my out. prayer. That was my bead. That was my yeah. that was my my uh, my true. prayer. You know, my yeah. my my chant, as it were. And so I I sent it as such. And you want to know something, man? I um stood there by that fire after the gifts were given, and I just sort of kind of got into like a a trance, a meditative a trance, um. Just from music, just from a beat, you know, um, that rhythm. And I was telling my wife afterwards, I said, you know, I felt like I was being like pulled downward and also at one point stretched upward, like up and down at the same time, like being anchored first. And then being stretched, like I felt like my arms were stretched so far. Like I was like, you ever watch those like old Stretch Armstrong commercials? Yeah. <laughs> Where dudes like all rubber elastic getting just yes. yanked and all that. <laughs> Dude, that's what I felt like. It was, I, I felt like I was so anchored in the ground and, and yet pulled up high that I couldn't be uprooted. But I had to first kind of really sink in deep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was just from that. Again, that random sort of off the cuff, unplanned uh, ritual. Yep. Um, so, where our inspiration comes from, you know, inspiring our communities. Uh, I like to think that it can come at the most randomest of times. And talking about it, sharing it, doesn't. It's not a bad thing. No. You know, we 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 can we can genuinely maybe inspire others to just realize that this is real this is at least it was real for us for me in the moment you know i'm not saying that well if you do this that thing and the other you're going to get the same results as me or none of us are doing that i feel like you know we're not saying that our experience is the experience that you should expect for your experience but i think that our experiences can be a form of inspiration as well and and, and maybe give people the uh the feel-good endorphins to pursue and, and do things of their own you know 
it's important That's also important. to really i'm oh, sorry uh it's important to provide and yourself the opportunity to have those moments while they may or may not happen it's important to give yourself that that chance yeah because you're not going to be able to have that moment unless you give yourself the opportunity you know, who knows maybe after you know this watching this video you know, you know what all right I'm going to bust off a rune set or, oh, you know what? I'm going to go for that nature walk barefoot. Or, you know what? I'm going to purchase that drum that I mean to get. All it takes is just that little boost, that little, hey, you know what? Do it. You live once, you know? That one little spark. And that's what that's what inspiration is. And inspiration is the spark that ignites the fire because the fire is then carried on by something else and then it's carried on by something else and it continues it's that torch it's that kenaz you know that, I was just that, thinking about that, too. that that illuminating that sort torch. of beacon and when yeah. you carry that torch in the heart of darkness you're going to be that beacon of hope and that's what again checking myself but i know i need to practice the ego being part of my ego is this you know what it's great to feel to be that source of inspiration whether it just be for like five people or 800 people or thousands of people even you know, just one also, yeah um, even just one person exactly and that's that's all that really matters and that's also like we were saying earlier it's just intentions don't intend to say oh i'm gonna get a bunch of people to follow my butt and we're just gonna be the most spectacular thing on the block it's like no 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 i'll be humble and be grounded when practicing or you know doing something like that because you don't want to set the bar too high and be like, yeah. well, that was a waste. I'm like, no, you're overlooking the whole experience then. You gotta come at it like, but that's the thing though, is like people will do what they do, but like I believe that it's important to, you know, carry your intentions and go about in a way of like, you know what? If it doesn't work out, hey, I tried. You know, it's just like uh, like you're trying to find a date. Or yeah. um, you're trying to plan something like um, a bachelor party for your friend or um, an assignment that you're working on in college or the, the situation scenarios can, uh, you know, vary tremendously. But, you know, yeah. just have a backup plan and just know if it doesn't work out, you know, there's always next time. But that doesn't. Well, I always like to think that it has to do with our. Yeah, I always like to think that it has to do with that you're, you know, your again, intention, frame of mind. I forget which it's a it's a line from one of the uh, one of the Icelandic sagas, I believe, but it's I think it goes something along the lines of like the bold succeed wheresoever they go. You know, um be bold. Yeah. And and that's the thing about it is, you know, especially I think in heathenry is is so much of this uh I don't know what do you call it, like the 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 bros of true types, right? The macho, I'm the Viking, this whatever that. No, no yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. They're, 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 that's that's cartoony. That that's Looney Tunes, right? That's yeah. not what we're talking about. We're talking about being. We're talking about being bold. We're talking about being, can you know, remaining steadfast in our convictions, and that's what. That's what I'm talking about when I say like, be bold and you will succeed. Don't be a jerk. You know, don't be insensitive and don't don't be so so absorbed in yourself that you don't realize what purpose you actually should be serving, you know, but be bold about it and be convicted in what we're doing. And and the genuine nature of it all is going to, you know, we're you, kind recognizes kind. You're going to see the types of people who are doing this for the right reasons. And you're going to link with them and you're going to align with that more so you know i think that that's why folks like you and and papa olifson and eric and others you know that's why we've connected in the way we have is because we stand on mutual ground we understand we that the similar intentions and what we're trying to do and that's also i also not to take away from what you're saying but also to add it's i also feel like it's necessary yeah it's not important to have the the outside the spectrum like it's like there's one uh one time or a few times I shared with you, there's this one gentleman who has this little TikTok page and like he's so frustrated, all the things you're talking about. Like this guy straight up had like uh 
his eyes were painted like Robin from Batman Robin. Then he had this like this whole Viking get up, like the whole armor and then playing rap in the background. And just like, <laughs> like, hey, make sure you like this podcast. And, like, share, share, share. It's just really going above and beyond, like being absurd and obnoxious and just like, you know, say he's a Viking and all that crap. I'm like, no, no, no. Damn it. No, that's not. No. Yeah. But that's okay. It's, it's nice to have a point of reference as to what to follow by, but also to what not to practice. You know, it's just, that's what's beautiful about the world that we live in and necessary as well. You know, it's just kind of like with the personalities in general, you know, there's going to be people oh, yeah. you vibe with and people you just can't stand. And I'm sure it's mutual in a lot of cases, but, and that's kind of the thing about like our, our path and our practice is I feel like it's important. We You've discussed and I've discussed is, you know, I want to take pride in knowing that I love and appreciate most beliefs and practices as long as they carry, you know, the intentions and knowing that it's not going to hurt anyone it's between consenting people. It's not forced upon them. That's cool. You know, if you find praise and great tidings and awesome moments with Jesus or Buddha or whatever you decide to believe in, kick ass rock and roll. I'll be right behind you. Like, hey, you know what? Cool. I support what you do. I mean, I practice what you do, but I think that's special. If it helps people, keep doing it. You know, but there are paths and practices that I will not abide by and will not follow for the obvious of reasons. But yeah, the crazy people who will support that. You know, you have the the branch civilians who did all that crazy stuff, <laughs> and then we have like uh, Muslim extremists. And I'm just using examples here. I'm not trying to. Yeah. Cast in stones, right? Like that. I'm just saying there's just examples. Oh, but, yeah. There's 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 bad apples in every bunch, you know. But also that goes into, you know, not being too ecocentric and also knowing that, you know, not abusing that that power that you could possess one day in the future. You know, who knows, Jesse? Maybe maybe like five years from now, you could have a giant platform and just find yourself in position to really use it to your advantage in a lot of bad ways, but you just, you know, you don't. Mm-hmm. And uh, it kind of reminds me also, um, this is kind of like random, but also appropriate. It's, uh, I was on TikTok and I uh, I watched the video. I'm going to share it with you after this, uh, explaining, you know, uh, the purpose of uh, Kugan and Mugen for Odin. And it's not word for word, obviously, but, you know, it's just what really hit me is this, you know, those are Odin's ravens going about, you know, checking on all of us and seeing what we do what we're given and there were times that i was giving something special and i might have botched that opportunity and it really makes you really consider that when you have that opportunity again to see something special you know to go about it in a different way like you know what i i got a little too selfish that time or you know what i got a little too a little too confident or maybe I wasn't confident enough. I should have seized that opportunity. Like, oh, that cute girl at the restaurant, I, I should have asked for her number. Or you know what? That raise I was afraid to ask for, I should have asked for it. You know, it, it could be applied in various ways, but also I think that's I think that's proper though, to have that figure in our lives to be like, hey, is he really utilizing what he's given? Mm. If he's not, then he can't get upset or pissed off too much without making the necessary changes to, you know, make that happen. You can't. You can't wake up every day in a bad mood, expect for a good day. You're just setting yourself up for failure. You got to wake yeah. up with the best of intentions and outlook. And that's what's tricky, though. There are days where I wake up, like, you know what? I, I do positive affirmations a lot. Like, you know what? It's going to be a good day. And man, I'll tell you what, the world's like, oh, really now? Oh, you think so, huh? You know about that? <laughs> you know about that? It's like, oh, well, here you go. And that's so. Exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> but that's the thing. Don't be discouraged if you have a bad day or two or a streak of bad days. Guess what? Yeah, when man. that badass day comes, it's going to be all the more special. And that kind of ties into what we were discussing earlier is moderation. You know, if you abstain from doing, you know, whether it be wacky tobacco or, uh, you know, certain musicians you really love to hear or listen to or your special beverage that you like to partake of every now and again. When you abstain, you go back to it after a while. Like, oh, man, yes, this is cool. This is Favorite. special. Right. That's, that makes it all the more meaningful and all the more, you know, special. 
Yeah. The, uh, man, there were so many things that I was thinking about when you were talking that I'm like, I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to come back to that. I know I'm going to come back. It's terrible. Like, oh, whoa, son of a bitch. But, uh, Shoot man. to laugh because I'm going to get off this podcast. And, oh, I should have talked about this. <laughs> but I think uh, one of the one of the first things that comes to mind is 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 going back to a little while ago where you're talking about people's beliefs and who they believe in and you know as you know I'll be right there kind of behind you to back you up that sort of thing I uh you know I uh I remember this was this one episode of uh Little House on the Prairie and I shared a clip of it on my social media one time because my my wife sent it to me uh because I was going through some stuff with with um kind of like my side of the family or whatever and um, it was a clip where, uh, you know, Michael Landon was, was, was paw, you know, and, and the, the angles were the, the little girls, Laura and whoever angles wilder. So the, uh, the line was like the, this, I forget which, which of the daughters it was, I think it may have been one of the daughters was talking about the indigenous people of, of, of the country. Right. So the native indigenous, uh, folks talking about how they're, they're, they're all a bunch of heathens, you know? And uh, and and Michael Landon's response was, you know, uh, they may not worship God the same way we do, or read the same Bible, but they're all his children, just the same. Exactly. And you can put that phrase over any, you can layer that phrase over any religious outlook that you have. You can you can look at your higher powers, right? You can look at your sacred deities, whether they be the Norse gods, the Celtic gods, the Romans, the Greeks, the the, the Indo-European gods, the the yeah. yeah, whatever. I mean, it you know, a label's just a label. You can put that phrase over anything, and and the sentiment, the spirit of that phrase, I think, just still resonates. It's you know, they may not do it the same way we do it, but they are all part of that creation they're all part of this you know greater plan whatever and but you know at the end of the day uh what are we doing locally what are we doing here to to inspire our communities is is, is talk about stuff like this is is that it doesn't really matter uh you know we have these local meetups and and, and, and events and stuff in our area and, and i see some people commenting wow that sounds pretty norse are all paths welcome and of course. Oh, I, I I see those things. Yeah, exactly. Of course, right? We would say that. We would think that. But for but, someone yeah. to ask that question tells me that in the past they have had an experience that has made them not feel welcome. Exactly right. You know, and that, I feel like a lot of that might have to do with previous beliefs. Could not, be pre- like, yeah, I, could be it, previous beliefs, or it could just be that they maybe had a association with a group or, or or a person at one point in time that made them feel like there were, were very hard lines between what was accepted and what wasn't you know and that, that actually, uh, sorry it's that kind of what really uh goes back into the highland thing is um anyone who's familiar with the introduction of the uh the ceremony is like you know we are all brothers all people and those words resonate with me very closely. And I think that's what, what makes them very special. And another point I'm going to bring up shortly after is about one of your things that you say in your podcast, though, is just, you know, modern heathens and modern times. You know, we're not living back in the early days, you know, when Vikings were a real thing and all that. You know, it's just we're not condemning Christians or Catholics because of what they did or, you know, hanging out people who had like people who like had ancestors that were slave owners like does that make us slave owners no <laughs> right all catholics and christians like condemn pagans no if we yeah. shouldn't carry that grudge we should be like all right these are new times new exceptions new days we need to be more broad and accepting and again each person dances to the tune of their own special song but right. for what I stand to believe in, I believe that, you know, we should all accept each other. Now, should we all follow each other? That would be very confusing and very disorienting. Oh, yeah. But yeah. also, it's, it's important, like you were mentioning, uh, you know, it's just 
to have that proper intentions and knowing that they're coming from a place of love and concern right on. You may not agree with them, but let them do their own thing. Don't crush something that makes someone feel special unless it's hurting someone or yeah. causing some very unnecessary drama or whatever the hell, you know? It's yeah. just, I mean, it's like, you know, look like, yes. Uh, are there certain things that are just are a certain way? Yes. And and that's where a lot of people in this, you know, especially in today's day and age, um, people uh, get offended when unequivocal truth is is shared they're like well you know that doesn't align with my personal feelings well it doesn't have to and it's not no. supposed to and you're nothing special to think that it should hey patrick should feel this way about such and such or this path should adhere to jesse's whims and whatever the hell like no nah, that's not how it works yeah, you know what I mean, and 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 but so, like some things just are just unequivocally true. I mean, so other other than that, whether it's you know cultural or regional or traditions that that kind of align with a certain practice on things. Like I I I got a I got a comment on a video not all that long ago, and this 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 also kind of ties into just how we are, can be inspiring to people, you know, watching what we say, being careful of how we say it. Because people see everything that us as content creators and and and, and whatnot uh, share, you know, you're gonna go tell me that uh, um, something that I was doing on a video was was cultural appropriation because uh, sweat lodges was not a Norse thing. Um, it's American, right? So, but the, yeah, I guess. But the point is, is that no uh, sweat lodges actually. Um, existed in finland <laughs> you know i mean like there is actual evidence if you want to and, and and there will be people that say that well well finland are not part of the the nordic peoples they are not nordic people they're they're indo some indo-european they're they're, they're not they're not no, you know semantics at that point I, i'm not going to yeah, get into the, i'm not going to get into yeah, the, the semantics of it but the point was is that they were saying this is cultural appropriation because you're sweating in in a you're you're, you're doing a sweat lodge and i go um, number one, do you know the the tribe that the person who I was doing this with is affiliated with, who their ancestors are? Number one. Number two, do you know the 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 nation, the 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 indigenous nation that that I am affiliated with? And do you know who my ancestors are ancestors are? Um, uh, all of which, you know, the the answers are no and no and hell no, you know, because how would they? Right. Um, but yet they'll just, you know, people just go out there and just fire away at stuff and uh, you know, make these outrageous claims like you know you're you're doing all these things that it's it's cultural appropriation. Well, based off of what? I'm not I'm not appropriating any culture. If anything, I'm I'm right. living the culture that is tied to my ancestry. So let me be, and you find a nice hobby that makes you happy, and and quit trying to tear people down for finding the same for themselves. You know, they actually um. Funny touches on something very important that you mentioned in your previous video if you don't mind me discussing is um uh, yeah sure when you're trying to um build bridges with some family members that may not exactly agree with your um your life choices you know is to guard your hall so to speak uh, uh, but which are your phrase that you used the previous stream though is this you know I'm all about accepting various walks of life and doing what you want to do. But there are going to be people that just want to have nothing to do with you. You could come in with the best of intentions and the purest of heart. But sometimes there's just some people you can't reach no matter how much you love them or how much mm. you want to do good by them. It just won't work out. And that's okay. You know, it sucks. But it's important yeah. to realize that when you're trying to win a battle, this clearly not a battle you need to be undertaken. It's just, it's yeah, just you got to know. You, it's like Kenny Rogers said, man, you got to know when to hold them. No one got to fold know them. when to fold them. <laughs> Look away, <laughs> you know, and there's that, you know, yeah, to your point. Um, that was it that was it that was a situation where i learned that this was a hand that i had to fold you know but it's also a very noble 
of you specifically mentioning to that point of you to, you know, bear the hatchet in some respects. And I'm not asking you to get too specific into the uh, the dealings that you're undertaking, yeah. but you know, I'm just saying. When I heard that podcast, Jesse, it really reached very close to home. It's like you know, from the very uh, beginning of my path, as you know specifically, is like you know, I would be very. I don't want to say the word scared, but I'm very hesitant of sharing yeah, guarded. things to my timeline. But guarded, over time, right? over time, I've come to the point now, I'm like, you know what? This path has helped me tremendously mentally and spiritually and just in every aspect that I even imagine being touched. And it was, and you know what? If my family can't handle it, Sorry, not sorry. You know, I mean, I can't yeah. expect everybody to be open minded like my father and my mother. And they're and not. Brother. Yeah, not that's everybody is. That's something I'm very grateful for to this day, especially with what you dealt with. Like, I'm just thinking about my father and my mother and my brother. Just they all do they follow heathenism? Absolutely not. Will they in the future? Absolutely not. If they did, my jaw is on the floor. But, uh, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but, you know, it's just that's the thing though is i'm willing to reciprocate that also am i a catholic no am i ever be a catholic again probably not you know future is a crazy thing no one knows anything but i'm pretty fucking sorry pretty right. darn certain that that's not going to happen but it's just that kind of beautiful thing that we share with some people some may not it's just to have that mutual understanding and I think that's one of the beautiful things about who we are, what we are as humans, and to, to have that, to be capable of that experience. And I feel like right. it's also something that we could also put into practice. And because I am very guilty of that too, you know, like sometimes I hear someone saying something I don't agree with. I'm like, ah, you're full of crap. Wow, oh, get the heck out of here. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes I'm like, you know what? This really helps that person. That's really cool. You take it from a different approach, flip the script. Like, you know what? I don't agree with that, but that's really cool that, you know, they're inspired to do something that I've never done before. You know, whether it be starting a business or any other thing that you can even think of, you know? Yeah. And, 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 and that was a big, uh, that was a big thing for me. It was, you know, just because I don't agree and just because I may be convicted and, and, or, or have a conviction to think, look, I don't think what you're doing is right. And I have to tell you why I don't think what you're doing is right. But do I? Do we? Do you really have to tell people that? And, and, and what the thing that I learned was that, especially with uh, what I was facing, was, you know, I, I violated one of the very cardinal rules. I don't, I, you know, not cardinal rules. Like, a, like a, it's a terminology. I'm just saying, you know, it wasn't that serious but i'm saying like i i violated one of the, the very things that i stand very staunchly by and that is you know hearth home everyone's hearth and homes their their separate homes uh is is sacred and it's sovereign right and it's not to be infringed upon by anybody and i did that one thing without even re like without even realizing it in the moment but 2020 you know uh, hindsight being 2020 i realized that yeah i sure shit did i i broke my own rule and i and i confronted my tribe about that and i said look guys you know i mean i didn't realize it at the time but i broke the very thing that i said i would swore to you know defend and, and uphold and that was a moment of of a harsh lesson you know to be learned and uh but a lesson was learned and that's that's what it is about you know that that's that, that's part of inspiration too is 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 being adult enough and being uh, aware enough it, it doesn't even necessarily I think maturity maturity probably does have a lot to do with it i would say because uh, there, there's there's plenty of people that are are, are like just bold faced given the facts and they're like no -uh, you know because they're young and dumb and full of you know what yeah and, and they uh they, you know they don't want to hear it we've all been there i mean that's 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 nothing new so yeah there's a there's a level of maturity to realize not just realize it but 
accept it and 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 realize that hey i'm out here talking about all kinds of stuff that a lot of people would agree with and when i mess up when i make a mistake i am willing to accept it when i've been faced with that you know what i mean and go about the steps of of making that corrective action to to not make that uh the same mistake twice you know because maybe even make the opportunity of what did michael scott say he said uh fool me got... fool me once shame on me but fool me twice strike three or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was like a dumb I'm not, I'm not superstitious but i'm a little stitious. i'm a little stitious you know? <laughs> I want people, I don't want people to, to love me, to fear me. I want people to be afraid of how much they love me. Yeah, that cracks me up. Like that's <laughs> frightening, but yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> we just went off into the office, but yeah. Hey, you, you know, know what? Just random. So it's random. random. <laughs> Can you give me just uh, a few moments? I gotta step off the camera. First. Yeah, just, yeah, just, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm, a, I'm a filibuster. For those that I, don't realize what filibuster means, filibuster was a term. You can do your thing. I'm, I'm okay, you're, you're gonna find out later because yeah, filibuster, you yeah, know, right for, for, for all of those people that are wondering. Patrick's so enthralled and enthused about what filibuster means that he's willing to sacrifice his off-camera time to know what filibuster means. Well, filibuster. Is 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 just filling in the gaps, right? You got to You got to fill in, fill in the gaps, and and do stuff that uh, talks about a thing. So for those that are willing to hear about a thing, um, this this podcast episode is being aired the weekend of the Feast of Fimbultir here in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. So at the Case and Trailhead um, Park, and we're looking at some really nice weather this weekend. My go the uh, Ulf is going to team up with uh, Greg Strong, the chieftain of Raven Moonhearth. And those two guys are going to be kind of leading this uh, lesson about Odin. Um, I'm being told that there's going to be some sort of a uh, ritual thing. It's a potluck sort of event. So the event details will be in the description and in the show notes um, of this podcast. So definitely be sure to check that out. If you're in the area, you want to come down for that. That's just literally here in a couple of days. And then, the following weekend, which is the weekend, twelfth, uh, thirteenth, and fourteenth of May, is is uh, Feast of the Fallen. My wife and I will be there. Um, like I, uh, like like for everybody that's that's you know listened and, and stuff up to this past week, you know, um, my father just passed away, and and May thirteenth uh, is his birth date. So I will be uh, doing you know. I will be vending, doing rune readings, uh, camping, and and partaking in ritual for Feast of the Fallen with Raven Moonhearth on the uh, on on my father's birthday. So, um, that's going to be an interesting experience. I am doing the best that I can to kind of mentally prepare for that, but you know, having never gone through anything quite like this uh to to know what to expect would uh, right. it would be would be unfair to say so and here he is here he is He's thank back. you for uh nature was calling and i couldn't ignore it any longer so oh yeah man that's the thing about nature you know the sea is always right <laughs> the, the 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 forest is always right the river is always right the mountains are always right nature is always right there's no law no nope. you know talked about that a bit last week too because of the the inner outer dynamic you know um but yeah i uh i don't know i feel i feel like uh so much of what we can talk about in in, in this episode and and when i rewatch it and when when people come back and watch this um there's going to be things that that pop back up at different points in time for different people you and i included that are going to further inspire us and continue to hopefully inspire others you know it's uh it's kind of one of those things where again i was looking back on memories today and i'm like wow that thing was inspiring to me or to someone 
you know, years ago. And then I think about it and a random thought pops in my head and I look back and I say, yeah, that was, that's a, now it's inspiring to me again. Uh, it kind of, t- it, it, it touches on that continued continuity of the flame, you know, that, that spark that ignites, that illuminates, that is carried, that, that goes on and on and on. Something and, I, uh, uh, something I was thinking of was, uh, not saying we're towards the end of this cast. I mean, if we are, we are. But something I'd like for everyone to do who's watching, something to, you know, do. At the end of this podcast, when the opportunity presents itself, and you know of someone, there might have been someone in your mind right now that has inspired you tremendously. Now that person's still alive, I say take this opportunity to let them know that you know i think it would go a long ways now if that person has passed hey you know what light a candle sit by the candle make you know what thank you for example me my grandmother or my cat ivar thank you ivar for being a reason to know that each day here is a blessing whether it be as simple as you know waking up and be able to face a day or just having a companion at the time who loved me for me and saw nothing else rather than food and catnip and, you know, what cats do. You know? but, um, yeah. but seriously, though, take this time or, when, like I said, when that moment presents itself to let them know. Or it can even be a boss that is going through a really crappy time right now and they're just at wit's end. And you see them stressed now, like, hey, you know what? Uh, that change you made in the office is really cool. Or, hey, you know what? That haircut looks pretty spippy. Anything. Just <laughs> as long as it's meaningful and, you know, carries something special. I think that it really can go a long way. Because you'd be amazed with something so simple as kind of gestures could do. And also, like we were mentioning, we have been giving credit to each other with this entire podcast. And I can't be more thankful enough to have stumbled across Nick on Musings and just to have this opportunity even now to be talked to all of you, you know, will this video get like a thousand likes or whatever? Who knows? Yeah. Even if it's just five people here, you know what? I, I appreciate what these guys are doing, you know, that's, that's awesome. That's really cool. And I find it very special. And that's, um, one of the many things I love about these guys that I follow, especially High Long, you know, this is, again, creating opportunities, meaningful experiences, and meaningful friendships. Who knows? You know, you might stumble across a person in the comment section, like, hey, I agree with what you said, man. This guy's right. You know, you guys might become friends. Who knows? YouTube yep. is an amazing platform on record while we're on that topic. Is, uh, that's where I had a lot of meaningful interactions with YouTube. Not so much with... Uh, what is it? Uh, Spotify, because they don't really have comment sections, which I think is actually very paramount to a lot of engagement in mm-hmm. that regard. Because, like, you know, when you don't have a comment section, you're like, uh, cool. All right. Yeah. You know, well, at the end of every, of at, at the end of all of my episodes, or, or, or in all of my episodes on Spotify, there's always an area for you to answer a question. Um, and it might be just, you know, what did you think of this podcast? Or it might be something a bit more specific related to the topics of the podcast, you know? So for those that do actually watch and listen, because Spotify does, as I mentioned, uh, this is a video podcast on Spotify. Um, so, you know, you can always uh, answer the question. And, and I have, you know, I have all the contact information. You know, you guys follow me on my socials. You can DM me on on Twitter. You can DM me on Facebook. I don't get instant messages on on instagram because i don't really keep track of that platform although you can follow me on instagram and email midgardmusingstn at gmail.com you can call into the podcast and and leave a voicemail and that number is 615-671-9832 and you can leave a voicemail your voice can be heard on on the podcast you can remain anonymous you know that's another big thing that I'm about is a lot of people may want to say something and they just don't want to 
have their name or anything attached to it. You don't have to say who you are. You can just you can make up a name, um, and 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 your voice can be can be shared on the podcast. I would love to hear what people's thoughts are, what people's reactions are. I would love to just share that. I would love that to be a feature on the podcast where people, hey, you know, we have a segment. Remember how that was old? Like I don't know, Patrick, if you remember from like, uh, you know, radio shows and stuff back in the day. You know, they would have these like segments where you know callers would call in and and they would have voicemails or something left questions. And the host yeah, of the show yeah, would would that. answer those questions and stuff. And that's, you know, that's what I always plug. You know, that's what I would love to that's hear. Cool, People bro. have ideas, topics, just thoughts, comments, whatever. You know, if you want to hear something on the podcast, you want to have a, a rap about it or or have us talk about it, you know, let us know. Who and knows? Maybe after so many times of leaving an anonymous tip, that you're finally built enough confidence to feature yourself as a person. And hey, you know what? Yeah. Anyone who... Just thinking, man, I do not want my voice heard or my name given. Hey, been there, done that for the longest time. But I've now look at you. hurdle of social anxiety. I'm like, you know what? This is Patrick. This is me. Here are my hands. You know what? Oh, on that note, screw it. Here's my <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm damn proud of it too. Because you know, how many of you guys get to say, Oh, here's your shoe, you dropped it. Here you are. <laughs> you are pretty dexterous with those man remember we were walking along the greenway and those 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 giant oh yeah, the, hedge the apples yeah those hedge apples hedge apples people in the south know what hedge apples are yeah, yeah they're like the size of softballs and he's over here he's over here like freaking uh like georgia the jungle just chucking them with his foot and i'm like look at this guy i can't do that <laughs> <laughs> you know I don't have to worry if I drop the soap. I'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> you got that part figured out. I always got to drop that line. But yeah, um, <laughs> that was Jesse was saying. I'm not, I haven't reached the level of notoriety as Jesse or Paul. Whatever. <laughs> but um, if anyone watching has any questions or concerns or comments regarding myself, um, you can always find me at the group that Jesse will be posting a link to in the High Lung Spiritual Mental Health Community. And also, um, I'm available on Facebook and um, I recently just re-downloaded Instagram. I usually use Instagram for, um, I follow another page completely unrelated to this, but it's uh, the Sopranos group, as Jesse knows, and I'm a very mm -hmm. young fan and uh, star Good, supporter. But yeah. uh, if, if, if you want to reach out to me, I'm more than willing to uh, talk to you and uh, mostly any hour of the day, but uh, you know, like I do in my group. If you join my group and decide to join, please answer the questions. Yeah, man, it's not that hard. Easier, <clears throat> but not also I just need to know you're not a bot, you're not a spammer, you're not a scammer. Because again, this is a safe place that I'm providing, as well as Jesse and anyone else doing what we're doing. Just we want to make sure that you have the optimal experience, and that's why we're getting created in my group and the having you know raffles or a uh, contest you know it's only gonna get better i was and i talked to cliff about this all the time I'm like you know what when we first started this live thing on my group he's like you know right now we're just messing around but eventually it's gonna grow and mature a lot like jesse's channel from back in the early days we were like mm. you're like when you're the first video i saw you you had this you know white background with like a staff here and like the sound was like really you know intense terrible <laughs> it was yeah, <laughs> yeah no i'm super critical of myself dude look my ego is not so big where i can't say what, when when my own content i'm like why did anybody subscribe to me back then I, <laughs> like it sounds like i'm though. talking that's into cool a though. sounds like i'm talking into a dixie cup you know <laughs> but that's when you know you got the right followers though who look past all that the, the learning curve yeah and that's in the stage that my group is in right now and that also makes me humble and appreciate you from the very start of what you were doing i'm like i even saw that too when i first watched your video I'm like you know oh. he's he's new to his thing too you know that the the first key or how to perform a basic heathen ritual <laughs> you, you posted that link a few times but i i say share away man because you know i've watched a lot of tutorials in the beginning of my journey a lot of them were just very either impractical hard to follow or whatever but just you know if you find someone that you could resonate with i highly suggest that you follow and um yeah 
Anyways, yeah. like I said, I would be really happy to have you guys join my group. And just know that, you know, you're more than welcome to join. And, um, you know, would be very happy to have you here. Anyways, yeah. That's yeah. And then that's, you know, that's, that's a, I, I echo or, or whatever your comment there, Patrick, because um, just having known you for as long as I have and um, interacted with you in person as well as over the podcast like this, you know, um, this is a solid guy here guys and and he's doing he's doing good stuff and you know again you never know what your uh what your interactions might might lead to or or blossom into you know so right now it's it's the facebook group all of that stuff's going to be linked down below or in the podcast show notes um so wherever it is that you're listening or watching wherever all that information is where, wherever it lands check it out because it's going to be down there um and i'm sure you know this is again this is the third time now that you've been on this podcast and it's I not the say last the third time. i think so because the was... last was the last one was on when you were here right that's correct yes in person yep and then there was one before that and i want to say you've probably been on the channel and on like a live stream before too yeah, more there, than once there was one that uh i remember we did uh strictly just video chat without my picture here yeah that was the first one yeah there's another one and there's this one yeah, yeah. you know guys, there might so... be more. who knows i'd have to look back on this i'm probably gonna do it after this next oh Jesse, <laughs> cut it, cut it. yeah more. Two. You know? no no you know we gotta go back and edit this whole thing Ratchets. <laughs> <laughs> uh that's supposed to that's what's cool about this channel, though. You know, random healing ramblings. It like, could be more accurate of a, a title. Got to get Cliff on here one time, you know? Oh, he'd be more than willing. I, he, I can't speak for him, but I will speak for him. He'd be, uh, <laughs> he's a well, great guy also. Uh, yes, he he's is. He's following very closely in the steps of Papa Olipson, too, as far as crafting. You know? Actually, I noticed. Now, since I have the opportunity, I'll share with you guys. Um, this is a, a rattle that Cliff made me. From a deer bone or deer jawbone. Deer jawbone, yeah. Yeah. Pretty incredible craftsmanship. He uh he probably couldn't see it, but there's uh the rune algus is on there, which anyone who knows me as a person knows that that's my rune. And also, again, Jesse, forgive me, but I'm gonna share two more things. My headdress and then pop a whole yeah, please. Drum. So this headdress, funny story about this. I was at a uh, a Viking festival. So about this festival so there was one day i knew they were gonna be in um festus missouri which is like about an hour drive from where i'm at and one day depression was hitting a little hard I'm like you know what i don't feel like doing anything today and then my dad's girlfriend's like hey you know what Patrick? there's this viking festival going on I'm like yeah but it's an hour drive and that da, 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 da. Well, she goes well did vikings feel that way when they're raiding or doing whatever they're doing I'm like <laughs> damn damn all right you wow. got me <laughs> you know me. i don't yeah. want to go to raid england today mom right yeah i'm feeling kind of down today <laughs> just like all right all right you got me so i went down there so um i was looking at all these different venues and stuff and there's one that i saw a headdress and i'm like man i want this but i was scared to spend this much money but it's just anyways here one second i gotta take my glasses stuff i hate the way it looks with my glasses on but um What's Here's it made of? This is a coyote head. And then deer antlers. I mean, just you know my my connection with deer. Yeah, I know. So the whole uh, so the whole fur thing is is coyote from the yes. back from from the head like to the down to the back, right? Yes. Okay. So coyote pelt and deer antler. White tailed yes. deer, I'm sure. Yeah. Yes. Which I absolutely cannot get over this headdress. I used yeah. it a lot last night. As I sure I shared a lot of videos and stuff with you, but it was just absolutely incredible. And then next up is the creme of the crop here. The Our cream of the crop. crop. Yeah. The cream of the yeah. crop. Yeah. All right. And the artwork on this drum. I oh. mean. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna actually put a uh, I'm gonna put a picture up here of the drum for people to see because oh yeah for it's, sure it's, it's a it's a phenomenal piece and I'm so glad that you ended up with it because when I saw it I was like 
damn, that's like a whole ass story being told. And then it when is. I heard and when I heard you got it, I was like, that's that's what's up. So yeah, yeah. This, this this thing right here, people, that it's on the screen, um, or you can go to the the the, the High Lung group on Facebook where Patrick like he 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 was playing it. But yeah, it's it's beautiful. The audio may not come through. Huh? I said the audio may not come through, but what I'll do, if it's all right with you, Please. is um, is if you can send me the video of you playing it, like last the other night. night, yeah, yeah I'll 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 add it as a b b uh b clip or b roll um to yep. this uh to this podcast. So so stick around to the end, people, and and you'll hear it. So it does. It sounds amazing. And and tell everybody what is it? Is that elk goat? What's the skin on it? Oh, that's an elk skin. Elk skin drum. Yes, 20 inches. And it is it's... Uh, definitely a pretty penny. Um, I'm making payments because I actually it's a brilliant way to purchase that. Because you know, me, do I have that much on hand? Probably not. But yeah, anyone who's interested, uh, I posted this in my group too. It's just um anything Papa Olson makes, you can rest assured that knowing that it's genuine quality with the best of intent. It's just attention to detail is paramount to what he does. Like, again, looking to the artwork done on the drum, but more specifically, as before I purchased the drum, I'm like, hey, does it come with a mallet? He goes, well, it can. And he crafted this amazing mallet right here. Mm. Which, which is deer bone, right? Yes, that's correct. Again, more meaningful. And uh, he made it in such a way that was friendly to my hand. And with my, you know, condition and whatnot. And that just made it all the more special and more badass. And just, yeah, man. It's just, I couldn't have more, ask for a more better job for a birthday gift. And it ended up falling on yesterday, which I thought was kind of appropriate and really cool and really special. So, again, you know, the best of things happen when you least expect it. I can't see a damn thing. So I'm going to put these back on. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Jesse, where'd you go? <laughs> yeah, but, you're uh, like talking away from the camera, looking at the yeah. wall behind you, you know? Yeah, <laughs> no. so, so, yeah, but no, it's not that bad, but bad enough. But, um, but yeah, uh, Jess, I just want to thank you for an awesome uh, stream and just a podcast. It's been a great thing to be part of this evening. No yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up real quick because um, I know it's getting late for us, but uh, yeah, so, you know, I, I appreciate you, first of all, just because, again, it was a random question. Hey, you want to do it? And uh, you delivered. And, and I appreciate that. I, I do. It was not expected, not not, you know, you weren't obligated to in any way. But I, I genuinely always appreciate when you can come on here and rat with me for however long. So this has been a fun episode. And I hope that everybody who's listened and watched this, you know, made it this far, whether you're watching it all in one sitting or coming back and watching it later. I about um, to do that too. You know, enjoy it. And uh if you do, please show your support in any one of number of ways. You know, definitely check out um Patrick's stuff that he's doing um on Facebook and and join there if you're if you're not already. Um and then check out the Linktree link that's in the description and show notes of this podcast for all the ways you can support what i do um there's numbers of free ways if you want to drop a coin you can buy merch you can become a member on the channel you can become a patron on patreon you can do all kinds of number of monetary things but at the very least just watch it like it upvote it subscribe follow share comment all of the fun ways and things that you can do so I think that pretty much wraps it up, Patrick. If you want to just hang tight real quick while we say goodbye to the folks, I'll Absolutely. bid you a fair uh, a farewell here in just a moment. But uh, anything else that you want to say to the people before we uh, do our official sign off? Uh, yeah, one thing um, or two things, whatever. Um, be bold, be weird, and stay frosty. Be bold, be weird, and stay frosty. Not necessarily in that order, but all of those things. <laughs> <laughs> I can abide that. Um, so in addition to that, thank you all so much for tuning in and watching and listening to this week's episode. 
if you do like it, be sure to give it an upvote or a thumbs up. It is greatly appreciated. And can't thank you enough for all the support that you've been giving this channel and this podcast for over the years. So until we all see each other again, may the gods continue to notice you and may your ancestors smile upon you. <laughs>